Hello everybody, uh, my name is Derek. I'm here at Mill City Roasters. Um, I'm on the 500 gram, and uh, we're gonna do some profiles of some new green coffees. For the fall season, you know, it tends to be a pretty big uh, coffee season for a lot of people, not only with the holidays, but also with the changing of the weather, um, we tend to see a little um, upswing in coffee sales. And so that's an exciting time of year. Earlier in the week, we put the black diamond up, the Costa Rica Las Lajas Black Diamond. Um, so now we're going to work on another coffee that we just put up, which is a new washed uh, Yerga Chef. Washed Yerga Chef is Ethiopia. Tends to be uh, my favorite coffee because I really like the delicate flavors of a washed Yerga and I really want to try and get those to a really nice spot. I feel like they, they're a special coffee that kind of deserves a little bit of special attention. But to be really honest, I don't think any coffee, every coffee is special, so every coffee pretty much deserves special attention. So, uh, but that's that. Okay, so I'm gonna use a 500 gram charge. This is a new wash yoga chef, it's up for sale. Um, it comes from the washing station that I probably am gonna say wrong, but I think it's pronounced Halo Beretti. Um, that's the washing station. It's a very nice wash yerg, very traditional. It's got a lot of floral notes. It's got a fair amount of citrus, really good sweetness, really good body for a wash yoga chef. Um, so it really doesn't need a lot of work when it comes to the profile. One thing I did realize that the profile that I was using for the Lamu was a little bit longer. I was really building body in that coffee and maybe keeping, keeping the sweetness in balance too with the higher acidity or with the high acidity. This coffee tends to have a really more, the acidity is a little bit more delicate and the sweetness is a little bit higher in my opinion. So it doesn't need as much work in the, in the length of time of the roast. You know what I mean? You can go a little faster. It's a really simple profile. Um, I'm looking for five minute green to yellow transition. Uh, 930 first crack and then I'm gonna go plus 145 after crack uh, pretty simple profile there it's a little bit longer for some people that are looking at light roast they might be thinking wow this is this is a longer light roast profile it's actually shorter than my last light roast profile so for me it's a little bit more medium I'm gonna say so I'm gonna do that profile first um, like I said it's a profile I've done a few times so I have some notes here so it should be pretty easy to execute as soon as I'm done with that profile I'm gonna go into the second profile we're only gonna do two profiles today the second profile is gonna be a little bit different, but the biggest difference is gonna be that I'm not gonna only use the Yerg. So with the second profile, I'm gonna do something more for myself. I'm gonna share it with you all at home, but this is something I wanna do. So I'm gonna take the, the second uh, charge, which is we're gonna do 500 gram charges on the 500 gram roaster, and I'm gonna put 400 grams of, or I did put 400 grams of Wash Yerga Chef. So this is our 500 gram uh, Wash Yerga Chef uh, charge, ready to go. So for a second charge, I put 400 grams of wash Yerga Chef in this cup, and then I topped it off, uh, some of you at home would probably be able to guess, with 100 grams of the Las Lajas Black Diamond. So my mindset with this is going, uh, this wash Yerga Chef is a very delicate, lovely coffee, you know, that you wouldn't traditionally think of as a base or a foundation for a blend. But my brain immediately goes to that because I have this amazing Las Lajas Black Diamond that is a very heavy-handed, big, delicate in its own right, exciting cup that's quite expensive. So I'm thinking to myself, man, could I take this wash Yerg and just upgrade it with a little bit of the black diamond, just to add in a little bit of that complexity, a little bit more of the fruit, some more sweetness, and just more complex floral flavors because there's a lot, even aromas too, there's a lot of floral in that Las Lajas uh, Costa Rican black diamond. And I might get, you know, a little bit I'm gonna, I'm gonna save a little bit of money. You know what I mean? I'm gonna not use a, a full charge of black diamond. I'm gonna use 80, I mean, not to mention this, this Ethiopian isn't cheap, but it's gonna be a little bit more affordable coffee and it could have a really big splash. So we'll have to, we'll have to test them on the cupping table. We'll cup the 100% wash Yerg, different profile against the blend. And we'll just see how it goes. So this is kind of an experiment. Um, the second roast will be more experimental for sure. The first roast I've developed and, and hammered out. For the second roast though, I do have some, some uh, goals that I'm, in, that I'm keeping in mind. It's gonna be a little bit longer because it's a pre-blend. For me, pre-blends, you tend to side with the longer roast on pre-blends just because then you give the, t the beans a little bit more time to roast similarly. A really hot and fast roast with a pre-blend could show some, some modeling in the roast color or will show some modeling in the roast color. We'll probably still see some modeling in the roast color with this because we have a honey and a washed. But by going a little bit slower, we'll, we'll give the beans a little bit more time to kind of roast equally. At least that's my thought. So we're going for 5.30 dry end on the second roast, 10 minute first crack on the second roast, and then plus 145, two minutes. I'm just gonna make that decision on the trier, real time roasting decision. So I tend to like light. So if I can, and I'm comfortable with the roast development exterior wise on the beans, I'll drop at 145. 
but I will let it go out to two if, I, if, the, if the beans need a little bit more time or they need a little bit of more physical development. Because that's where I'll make the decision. I'll make the decision in the trier as I look for the bean surface to slightly smooth out. Okay, that's pretty much it. The roaster's been warming up. I'm gonna use the roast path to track my profile. But I just also wanna say that basically what I'm doing here is profiling. I'm profiling a green coffee and I'm doing it with multiple coffees today. Well, one of the things we offer at Mill City Roasters is education. Education is a big part of what we offer here at Mill City. You know, we sell a lot of machines and with that we wanna train our operators to just execute high level roasting to really provide the best product for the customer, but also to do the best service for the producers. So we really want to offer up education at cost to help you all get to be a better roaster, you know? So what I'm doing in this right here is a little mini version of basically what we do in our 102 roasting course. And this level to higher is what we're going to do in our quarterly profiling workshop. And that's going to be another subscription based basically group that will form and will work on profiles. So if you're interested in learning about what I do with these short profile videos in a more traditional one-on-one -on -one teacher sense to get a little bit deeper and into these discussions, to get some real roasted coffee from us, to actually cup, to get to the next level of what we're doing in these short little videos, definitely join us for one of our 102 classes or try and sign up for the profiling workshop. We actually send out invitations and then we'll add you into that profiling workshop. We're looking to knock out the first profiling workshop or kick it off in January. Join us for that, but we're going to do this right now. And I think I've given you all the information, so I'm just going to get to the roaster. I think it's hot. So I'm going to turn off the fuel, basically bring my air down to my starting airflow, and then get ready to charge. And I'm going to use a low airflow for all these roasts. I'm going to start out at charge with low airflow. Sometime around green to yellow, I'm gonna increase my airflow to medium, and then I'm gonna finish probably right around an outlier, I'll increase my airflow to my high setting. And that's traditionally how I roast. That's very traditional for most operators and most profiling roasters. Okay, so I have my um, airflow set to my starting airflow. Um, gas is off, I'm gonna hit the ignition switch. I haven't adjusted my gas flow at that point, so I'm gonna have to get on it for gas. I'm gonna look at my notes. It's looking like I'm going to do a one minute soak and then I'm going to bring in 1.5 kPa gas at one minute. Um, this is a little bit lower charge. So we're looking at a 380 charge. So I'm just going to let it come down a little bit. One of the reasons why I like to set my airflow to my starting airflow and let, my, let the actual temperature come down is I feel like that gives me a good perspective of where I'm at with the machine. You know, if it moves really fast, then the machine isn't super hot. If it's holding temp quite a bit, at my initial airflow starting point, then it, then it means the machine is quite hot. So I might want to go a little bit lower charge temp, or I might want to do something else, do it like a longer stop and go or a longer soak or a lower fuel setting, because that's telling me that machine is quite hot, you know, or hotter than, I, than I'm used to. Because machines are never static, you know? Throughout the day, the machine will get hotter as, as you roast on it. Okay, and there we go. Okay, it was a 380 charge temp and I got it charged right at 380. I started my timer in the machine and then I started my roast path uh, charge. So I might be, looks like I'm a second or two off of roast path, but I'm not really that worried about roast path as far as that goes. I don't do a lot of tracking of my roast via um, data logging. I use the data logging primary to kind of show me my rate of rise and how I'm, how I'm running that and also my basically up to the second current rate of rise. You know what I mean? So it'll calculate my rate of rise, but it'll also show me a rate of rise curve. So that's what I, that's primarily what I use. You know, I will use some of the other more basic markers. Like I might look at my turning point or I might look at the angle, the angle of the actual BT curve. You know, that's going to tell me the pitch is going to tell me how aggressive that coffee is moving. Okay. We're coming up on our one minute. It's going to verify my fuel setting. So I'm going to use one five KPA at one minute. So I'm going to hit the button and then I'm going to adjust the manual gauge. All right, there we go. That was pretty simple. All right. And I can immediately see the ET adjustment on the probe. You know, the ET probe is going to show the ambient temperature in the drum. And as soon as you turn on the flame, you're going to see that basically start to go up. We probably won't see the BT take on any like kind of movement or heat from that adjustment for a bit, maybe a minute or two, you know, to see the adjustment. Now, obviously, we're going to hit the turning point right now. 
and even if we didn't even turn the fuel on, we would see an increase of temperature, just based on the thermal battery and the charge. Okay, so I have done this roast a few times, only a few. So it looks like my first marker is going to be right around uh, dry end. Right at dry end, I'm going to uh, lower my gas uh, to 1 kPa, and I'm going to increase my air to my medium setting, and that's right around dry end. I like to use a towel every once in a while in the roastery just because things get a little hot. And whenever I'm grabbing the trier, I always like to just kind of cradle the trier in a towel. Um, it helps too if you, so you don't spill beans out of the trier, but then it also helps you just hold the trier with a little more comfort and a little more uh, confidence without uh, getting burned because sometimes the trier can be a little hot. All right. It's looking really good. We're only at two and a half minutes or right around the two and a half minute mark. We have a 530, I think this is a 530 one. Oh, this is a five. Sorry, we have a five uh, dry end. So we're looking like we're about halfway there. It's about right. You know, at this point, you only start to see a little bit of the kind of brightening of the green. So the green coffee is getting a little brighter, but there's not a lot happening. But you could get on the, on the trier and smell, though. You definitely will smell, you know, almost like um, fresh cut grass uh, on a warm day, you know, if you don't have like a bagger on the, the lawnmower. So it's just like piles of wet grass. Kind of get that smell a little bit. Mm, actually, now it's starting to already smell a little bit like food. There was definitely like a rounded kind of smell to it. It started to take on a little bit of starch. I want to say starchiness. You know, it wasn't so grassy smelling. Also, there was a lot of sweet notes in that. It was very kind of florally sweet, which is a good sign. Not necessarily for the roast, but for the green coffee. Okay, so now we're coming up on about less than two minutes to our green to yellow transition uh, marker, I should say. A lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll take little other markers because I roast on a lot of different machines. I'll take other little markers just to give me a temperature. So I can also kind of look at my temperature readings and kind of figure like, okay, how far am I? And then I can use my rate of rise to calculate basically if I'm going to be there on time or not. I didn't take a temperature marker on this one, but I'm pretty sure that this machine tends to hit green to yellow right around 320, 323 maybe on this roast exactly. Um, right now we're hitting an 18 ROR and we have about a minute plus to get to our number and we're at 296. So that's looking like probably 314, something like that, at five minutes, which is going to be close. We'll see. One of, one, one of, one, I'll be wrong in some way. Either I'll be wrong and 323 won't be the green to yellow, or I'll be wrong and we won't get the green to yellow by five minutes. So we'll be right. I'll be, uh, but I'll also be right on, on one of those ways too, which is exciting. Okay. Now we're past three. So I can see in the sight glass that I am taking on color. So I'm going to get on the trier a little bit. We're about a half minute from our green to yellow transition. And that's looking pretty solid. I'd say it's lime green to yellow. It's getting close, you know? Actually, no, it was beyond lime. More chartreuse, chartreuse on the yellow side of green. And, that, and if the seed was big, there'd be no way I'd be able to get there because this is a Colombian double A or Colum yeah, I'd never get there. But this is just a small little Yurgischeff. It's a little bean. I think we're gonna have it. All right, we're 10 seconds from it. 318, 319, oh yeah. We're right there. There's just a slight, that's it. 458, bing. I'm going to do my adjust. Oh, no, actually, do I do adjustment? Yeah, I do. So one, on, one KPA and 45. All right, I like that. And it looks like my next adjustment is in 45 seconds, and I just, or 45 seconds from then. So 545, I do another fuel adjustment. And I go up. So it's a little weird. This profile is a little wacky that way. I bring down the fuel a little bit and then I push a little bit more fuel in. 45 seconds, kind of odd. I probably could smooth that out by finding a median fuel between those two to like keep it at one level. You know what I mean? That tends to be what I do once I work on a profile a little bit more. I think this is only my third run of this profile though. So, and I kind of put it together pretty quickly right before this. So we're gonna go up to one three. It isn't a very, much, a very high increase though, you know? Three hundredth of a KPA. Pretty low, but it's but it is it is enough to make a difference. Okay, now I'm gonna get back on the trier. Oh yeah. Okay, now we're getting we're not cracking. Oop, there's an outlier. That's a little early. Wow, that was super early outlier. Wow, it's so weird because I could smell a little bit of sharpness in the trier, and that's why I, was, I said we weren't cracking, but I could smell a little sharpness. And as soon as I thought that, I heard a pop, and then I said, hey, there's a little crack. Hopefully that was a really strange outlier because that was really early. You know, so we still have another minute plus, yeah, minute 15, just to, just to keep the air or the fuel as is. If 
I would have heard a second outlier, or if I would have felt like they, that I was something was askew at this roast, and the roll or the crack was going to start early, I would have brought my air up pretty immediately and brought my fuel down right there. Probably, probably brought it down to one and brought up the air to 50. 52 is my high, so I would have done like a hybrid air, and that would have been an attempt to stretch out that profile to get to my marker uh, without hitting it too early. Okay, we're at nine minutes. Woo! All right, there's another outlier. I'm gonna do the 52 right now and the, oh, actually I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it ride. My gut tells me that I should make an adjustment right there, but this is a first roast on this machine of the day and it's a delicate roast, so we're not gonna fiddle with it too much. 52 right there, just according to our marker and I just heard another outlier, but I'm not hearing crack at all. Now we need crack, ooh, ooh. I think it's gonna be a little late. Yep, ooh, not much though. Wow, that's it. So 9.34, so we were four seconds late. So then 9.42, I lower my gas. We're gonna add four seconds to that, so 9.48. So we're right there. And that's a 0.9 adjustment, so 0.9 kPa or 0.4 kPa lower. And now we're just gonna let it ride. Uh, 11.15, 3.98 is our goal. Ooh, we're close. 11.10, 3.96.6. 11, we're gonna hit 397. Oh, we're one degree behind. So now I'm gonna go, we're gonna go 397.5. Yeah, that's it, 11.23, drop. I'm gonna bring the roast up high and then I'm gonna turn my fuel down. I'm just gonna get above 400 and then we're gonna go right into the next roast. All right, this looks super nice. So we basically, our goal was 11.15, 398. We dropped at 11.23, 397.5. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty finite little version of the ideal right there. So it'd be awesome if we could cup this against the ideal and, and notice a difference in what, eight seconds and half a degree. That'd be kind of cool, but I'll bet we won't. I'm going to use two KPA on this next roast. I'm going to bring this down. I'm also going to transfer my cooling tray. I don't want to slow this roast down by having my cooling tray on and I don't want it to affect my other roast. And, I, and I'm coming down in temp and I don't want to wait. And I also don't want to, we don't have a lot of time. We want to get through this. Oh, 35, I got 35 air there. Okay, I'm ready to go. So now we're going to do a three. Now this is kind of a new roast here. This is, this is a roast that I've done. I've been working on just for the black diamond. And I've never done it with the mix. So this is going to be a little bit new. We're looking for 530 uh, green to yellow. 10 first crack, and like I said, plus 145 to two minutes, just depending on where we're at. Um, 360 charge, so we're gonna go with the lower charge. You know, this black diamond honey, black diamond, honey, yeah, black diamond honey is very, is, 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 you know, it's a special coffee. So we're gonna go with a little bit lower heat because we don't wanna cause any negative attributes to that coffee. It is a honey, so it does have some sugar on the outside, and it's also small. It's very similar to the Ethio. It's just less oval shaped, I guess. You know what I mean? It's very much a traditional bean where it's flat and round, you know what I mean? Where Ethios to me are a little bit longer and almost like oval shaped. So we're gonna do one minute uh, with a two KPA um, and then we have a three minute halving the gas to one KPA. And that's obviously to extend the roast, you know? So we're hitting it a little bit hard from the beginning. We're going with a low charge temp, but then we're hitting it with a fair amount of gas just to get it moving. And then we're immediately pulling down the gas because we're trying to extend out the roast. All right. So one minute on, on this roast, we're gonna hit it with two KPA. I got my air low, so same as the last roast, low, medium, high, right around phase events. And, yep, we're good. Easy as that, okay. So now we're looking for our next marker, which is a little bit of a hard marker. Sometimes on profiles, I'll have pretty hard markers. So at 3.30, we lower the fuel by 50%. So we're going to, from two to one KPA. And that's very thoughtful in extending out the phase, not the dry phase. I'm bringing on the gas at 3.30 because I'm trying to extend the mid phase. That's where the trickiness of roasting happens, is we're doing things before they, before they show themselves. All right, lovely. So now I'm at two minutes. The Ethio, I'm, very, I'm, I'm really loving it. It's pretty perfect. It also feels right in my hand. There's like a, 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 you know, there's like a stoniness that's there, but not too stony. Like it's, it's definitely not super undeveloped, you know? Minute 50, 53 we did, I think, for development. 
Okay, we're coming up on our one minute mark, or well, I'm gonna lower, but I just wanna show you all, if I can show you all the roast. Yep, so it's really nice. It's got some, oh, shoot, oh, that was like eight beans on the floor. Okay, oh, 3.30, woo, I have a few minutes, or a few seconds, I should say. So at 3.30, we're gonna lower the fuel. All right, so I have 30 seconds, and in 30 seconds, oh, I don't think I have enough time. So one of, my, one of the tricks that roasters do is they like to crack beans. When you do new roast, you wanna try and see, especially if like, you're working on this coffee today. Let's just say today's the day I'm working on this one coffee. I'm not doing wacky blends. And, um, and I, w I probably would do at least two roasts, maybe three of the same coffee, just slightly making variants in phases. And I probably would mostly focus on the final temp and the final time in the phase. That's what I probably, my first would be my ideal. I'm gonna do this adjustment. So we're gonna cut our gas to one. All right, very. So in the beginning, we would take beans and crack them, smell them right out of the tray, because then that tells you, oh, it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent. Second, second way is we start chewing them. Ooh, 430, there's something happening at 430. Yep, airflow. Bam, very nice. So 430 was a pre-airflow adjustment before green to yellow. Usually that happens in a roast that I'm trying to kind of round out the green to yellow. I do a little bit of premature airflow increase and then that helps the energy just kind of blanket the beans a little more evenly and usually that brings my green to yellow like to a more clear position let's look oh it's close 5 30 ish green to yellow which i think we just hit it actually we did oh no it's a little there's a little translucence there super close okay that's it 522 so i'm going to write that down because that was a little early but if I write down 522 over 530, then I know from looking at the fuel adjustment, which we lowered the fuel from two to one, if I want to hit 530, I should probably go to like 0.8. Then I would have hit, then I would extend it out, probably more like 0.9. That variance of one tenth of a KPA probably would have given us our extra uh, eight seconds. So I take those kind of notes so that I can reconcile the profile the next time if if that's what I want to do. But to get back to this. When we started as roasters, we would grab beans out of the trier like this and break them and smell them. And then we would eat them. And then now we've gotten to this point, which is a little bit smarter. Just take a little bit, put it into a cup, grind it and smell it. Oh yeah. There's like a marmalade. There's a floral orange blossom. There's a kind of almond note, maybe like almond milk. And there's also some weird impediment to me being able to smell it which I'm gonna say is gas, because it hasn't rested. We took it right off for roast. But everything, as far as the roast goes, smells good. There's no acridness, there's no sharpness, there's no campfire, there's no bitter, there's no vegetal, there's no grass, there's no kale. There's all, like, it's, it's all developed flavors. Okay, so now it's looking like, oh, I think I missed a marker. 6.20, I was supposed to go to 1.5. Wow, okay. So we're gonna go, on all that talking, I somehow missed my marker, which was 1.5 at 6.20. Now I did a 7.30, 1.8. So I'm gonna mark that down. That's quite a bit different, right? 7.30, 1.8, you know? So we'll just see, we'll just see how it plays out. That's a perfect example of like, there's only so much you can do in a roast. So if I have my buddy hanging out with me and I'm talking to him, I'm probably not doing the best job with the coffee. So it's looking like 10.30, is our first crack. And at that point, we basically just bring the air up to our high mark, and then we just kind of let it ride at that point. So we're gonna see where we're at. We're about two minutes from that place. So that's pretty solid. So we'll just kind of see where we are. This roast is gonna finish a little bit darker. You know, it was finishing roughly 406 on the, the, the gauge. I don't know if I wanna go that far. I think I'm gonna go 398 was the last one, 397. I think I'm gonna go for like 402, 404 for final temp. You know, we'll see. And that, that's gonna work because we're kind of, we're behind on this roast. This roast is going a little slower, right? I missed my marker. I had to put in some fuel. So we're probably going a little late into the game, which is exactly right for going to the same time to a lighter temperature. So this might work out perfect for me. But this is also a roast that I have never done before with 80% of the charge. I've only done this with the Black Diamond and 80% of my charge is actually the Yerg. So there should be a little variance there. Okay, so now we're at 9.33.80. Trying to get this roast a little bit back on track. So we're about a minute from our goal crack temp. And I think we're still, we're 15 ROR. So I think we're still pretty far from where we need to be. 
but like i said, i think i like that. so i'm gonna back off my fuel right now because we're getting close to crack and i don't want a really i want i want an uptick in ah ror. so i'm gonna bring this down to our one three at ten, we'll say. oh, there's an outlier. wow. okay, i'm gonna do my airflow adjustment like i do for outliers, fifty two and i'm gonna put that at ten ten. and now we're waiting for crack, we're close. Yep, that's it. So 1025 is our crack, 393. I'm going to write that down. We've already done our airflow adjustment. So now I'm looking for 1225 on the extreme end of time to roughly 406. Or to be really honest, both these coffees are pretty awesome. I don't know if I can screw this up right now other than just to walk away and let it just continue to roast. But if I just do a minute 30 to 230, anywhere in there, if I don't touch this machine, it's probably going to be okay. But I want it to be as good as it can possibly be. So I'm going for 1220. I'm thinking like 404. Down an ROR. Okay, that's good. We're already past our last roast though, so that's that shows a little bit of difference here. We're now at one minute, one minute of, of development. We're at 398. So it's looking pretty solid. Eight ROR. Whew. Okay, another minute. We're gonna be at 406. Wow, we're almost right on track. Okay, now I'm lowering gas because I don't want to get there. 0.7 at 1130. 122404 is what my gut's telling me is going to be solid. I'm getting on the trier now. Putting my cooling tray up. Okay, looking good. Oh yeah, definitely it's smelling like crack. There's a lot of like, kind of like, I don't know what you call it. I don't want to say vinegary smells, but acetic type smells going on in the trier. 122403, 122404. Here we go. 12, 20, 40, 3.5. We'll take it. And I was comfortable with my roast level because I knew I was in a range that was good. 403.5. So the second roast was 12, 20 to 403.5. It's in the tray and it looks very nice. Wow. I can't really tell there's a blend in there. But I think there's like, there's just a, every once in a while there's a tanner, smoother bean. And that's usually what you'll see with like a natural or honey. They tend to be a little smoother, faster, and a little bit uh, more tan, less brown. They don't get as like, they don't take on color the same. It's a little different. So I think that's the Costas, the ones that just look a little smoother and a little tanner. So this one, I'm gonna smell this one more time. Yep, orange blossom, butter, kind of like, maybe now it's a little more candied almond. And then there's just a whole bunch of like orange smells like nice orange. And that's pretty good because that sat there for the whole roast. Wow. So it's hard to distinguish. I taste and smell things in my head. I see colors. And now this, the other, the previous one was very yellow orange. Now this is harder to describe for me, but it's very much red. It's no longer yellow and orange anymore. It's like a full on red, but it's on the like floral side of red. It's very floral. It's hard to describe in a way because it's very complex. There's like hibiscus in there, but like a sweet, like hibiscus tea, maybe like a pomegranate syrup because it's kind of like an acidic, sweet red smell. Maybe you could say, no, it's not really raspberry because raspberry to me is more floral. It's floral, but it's not floral in a raspberry way. It's floral in kind of like a grape way, like a purple grape, but it's not heavy handed, like a Concord. It's like a, maybe a red grape. Yeah. And there's maybe a little like, now it's kind of got a little winey going on, like a dessert wine, kind of like a really nice white dessert wine. So yeah. Oh, hey everybody. Oh uh, yeah. So just really wanted to like, um, wrap up that roast session that we did. So I just cut these roasts to my results. So the Yurga chef, I really like the Yurga Chef. The Yurga Chef is a lovely coffee. The roast, I think, is, for me, it's pretty perfect for what kind of cup I want. I don't mean perfect like I did a perfect job. I just mean for what the green coffee has, this is what I want out of this green coffee for me and a wash Yurga Chef. Um, so roughly with this roast, just to remind you all, we went five minutes to green to yellow transition, 9.30 to first crack, and then it was plus 153 development on this coffee, and I roughly dropped it on the 500 gram, at, just, to, just so you know, at 397.5 on the PID. That was the roast. Um, 
So in the nose I got uh, dry, I got citrus blossom, orange marmalade, a little roasted almond, and some bergamot. So pretty much what I was looking for, I liked it. When it was wet, I got some malt, uh, orange blossom, bergamot again, some butter, and then kind of final, I got a little bit of green tea in there. So it was a very lovely nose, I wanna say. Let's just jump right to the, the blend so we can kind of stay congruent. So now we have the Costa uh, Yurt Blend 80-20. Now that roast was 522 green to yellow, uh, 1025 to first crack, and then plus 155 uh, development to 403.5 on the PID on the 500 gram. So it was also another a nice roast. It went really well, went a little bit longer. Um, so with that one, in the dry nose, I got red licorice, lavender, red wine, and honestly, hubba bubba raspberry. It was like a strange synthetic bubblegum smell, but it wasn't plain bubblegum. It was like the raspberry hubba bubba. And I, I'm a kid of the 80s, so I remember hubba bubba raspberry. Um, wet, it was very much fruit punch, uh, ripe pineapple, berry jam, floral red, and then the final kind of summary for me was wine punch. So just those alone, the smells of the, the, those alone are vastly different. The roasts weren't that different, but the difference is, is the 20% of the black diamond. That's really what's different in these cups. And it's coming through in a very, very strong way. The cups are completely different from beginning to end. So that was just the smell. Okay, so then in the taste on the Yerg, it was very much congruent with what I was thinking. Clean citrus, tart, uh, the acidity was sweet and juicy. It had a thinner body, but it was very clean. Um, flavors were orange blossom, candied almond, uh, clover honey, um, mild candied ginger. So I really liked it. It was very much in spec for what I was looking for in this roast from this green and doing a sample roast and kind of coming up with what this green had, had to offer and then sourcing this green. It was pretty much exactly what I wanted out of that roast. Um, and that's a, a little bit of an adaption from the roast I was doing on the Lamu, because the Lamu profile wasn't really working for me on this coffee. Okay, now to jumping to the blend. The blend was ripe pineapple, raspberry overripe, so almost like overripe raspberry, you know what I mean? Not like to where they're rotten, but to where you're like, whoa, they've lost their acidity, because raspberries are pretty acidic, and now they're like sweet and heavy. Uh, soft, sweet acidity. So the acidity in that one, just because of the 20%, and you know, the development was almost spec on for seconds. But the adding of the Costa Rica made it the acidity soft and sweet, opposed to with this one, it was more citrusy and tart. Um, the body was round, soft, buttery body, kind of heavy, heavier, definitely heavier than the Yerg, but it was like, it was borderline heavier body, like heavy body. Flavors, summer red plum, a lot of summer red plum, citrus zest. So where this one was more blossom, fruit, marmalade, this one was more like zest. It, it, for some reason, it just accentuated the citrus zest quality. I thought that was a little strange. Um, red grape, very much red grape. Not purple grape, not super sweet grape, not fake grape, not green grape, malic grape, just like good old red grape. Um, and then, oddly enough, the final kind of flavor that I was coming up with, watermelon. It was like a floral red flavor of some sort. And watermelon was the closest thing that I could come up with. And it wasn't a super sweet watermelon. It was like that like acceptable sweet watermelon, which most watermelons, I feel like that's, that's kind of where they are, acceptable sweet. Usually when they're too sweet, they almost seem like that overripe uh, raspberry. They lose a little bit of their, their pop. Because I think of the acidity in a watermelon, even though it's mild and it's kind of more malic, I want to say, it's, that's part of the refreshing quality of the watermelon. Um, so kind of got watermelon. Um, yeah, so those are basically the cupping reports on those two roasts. So I'm happy with both roasts. I'm really happy with the Yerg. I think that's really great. You know, looking at the Yerg roast, the only thing that I might look at changing would be plus 10 seconds of development. So going from one, plus 153 to plus 203, I guess just a little subtle 10 seconds, just to get a little bit farther in development. You know what I mean? Just to bring it out to make it a little more developed and maybe you just get a little bit more roundness of cup and you'd get a little bit more body and a little more sweetness. This is very much on the side of brightness, tartness, thinner body, delicate floral flavors. I really like it. I think that's perfect for a wash year. But some people might want to just round off that acidity and make it a little sweeter. So that, I would just take, I would just add 10 seconds to the development phase. That's it. You know, I wouldn't go too much faster. Same time, just a little more time. Okay, now with the Yerg Costa, there was one thing at the end that was a slight dry finish. And that's kind of where the summer red plum came from. It was very much like the astringent skin of a plum. 
to me. There was a little drying there that was going on. So that one, this roast here, I feel like could, could, I could apply a little more roast craft to it and maybe better the roast, better the cup through improving on the roast. So for me, the two things that I'm thinking about, actually three things I'm thinking about, is I was 155 in development. Maybe if I went a little bit farther in development, I could add a little bit of sweetness that might balance out that astringency or just get rid of it. Because to me, it was undeveloped astringency. It was astringency from a lacking development coffee. It wasn't astringency from dark caramelization or astringency from old woody coffee. So I think a little more development would clean up that astringency and make it sweeter. So I'm just saying 15 seconds on uh, development. So we're going from a 155 development phase to a 210. That's it. I'm thinking a lighter finish. So it finished at 403.5. I'm thinking 402, just a little bit, a degree and a half less of uh, temperature on the final caramelization. You know, that, I think that's gonna improve and round out the cup a little bit. And then I'm gonna take 30 seconds off the mid phase. That mid phase went a little bit longer than I wanted. So I'm gonna take 30 seconds off the mid phase just to kind of make this cup a little bit cleaner. That was another big difference in cup. This one, the flavors were very clear. This one, the flavors were a little bit more muddled, a little more mixed. So if I figure if I take in 30 seconds off the mid phase on that one, I might clean that up a little bit and brighten up the overall cup comparison, keep them closer to each other. And then also those other two adjustments. Okay, I just wanted to share with you my cupping um, kind of report, um, how I thought about these coffees, what the actual phases were in case you guys want to roast these coffees and what adjustments I might make in a specific style to the cup. Hope this is helpful. Be safe. Cheers.